there will be here at Bells On. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. 12 minutes past seven. Let's take, talk more now about Super Saturday and head to Westminster. We can speak to the political journalist, Jennifer McKiernan. Good morning to you, Jennifer. Thank you very much for joining us. Just take us through, first of all, what will happen tomorrow? <laughs> um, well, first of all, uh, we're going to have frantic negotiations in Downing Street today um, with all the MPs to try and build this, this coalition of votes that, uh, that Boris Johnson needs to get to get the vote through tomorrow. Um, he's got to get to that magic number of 320. Um, and then in, in Westminster tomorrow, um, we're expecting a series of votes. Um, mean, meaningful vote four, um, as, as, your, uh, as your reporter just said, um, obviously we have been here before several times with Theresa May. Um, she, she brought a deal to Parliament and, and that was defeated three times. Um, now Boris Johnson is trying to do the same thing. Um, what the government um, wants to put on the table is, is basically um, a motion for, for the deal um, and a motion for no deal. And then um, the opposition parties are probably going to put down some kind of motion that perhaps allows that deal to pass, but conditionally, um, on, on the condition that there is a, a referendum, another referendum on that deal to decide whether the people of the UK still actually want um, to Brexit in this way. Um, and uh, then, then it depends if, if Boris has the numbers. Yeah. Um, if he does, then of course we, we, have, we have the deal um, and that will then um, hopefully proceed um, back to Europe. Um, there's a plenary session in Brussels next week, um, so it would need to be ratified by the UK Parliament very, very quickly indeed in order to meet that, um, that deadline. Um, and if it doesn't, then obviously the next the next time it could be ratified by Europe will be November, which means that Boris would have to ask for an extension. Um, then um, if it doesn't pass, then, I mean, we're back to square yeah. one, aren't we, basically? <laughs> yeah. um, everything, everything falls into chaos once again, and again, we're looking at that extension. So um, so it, it is still possible. Boris has obviously gone um, to huge lengths here. Um, he, he's made some, some major concessions um, in order to get this deal um, agreed, um, but whether or not he can get it past, past the MPs is, is still up in the air. Yeah, and it does come down to the arithmetic, Jennifer, doesn't it? So the magic number, you said, is 320, so he's what, 280 Conservative votes, isn't that right? So he'll need votes then from Labour, from <laughs> former Tory independents, ex-Labour independents. Yep. You can just imagine the political manoeuvring that will be going on in Westminster today. So there, there are so many factors, even within the parties themselves, that it becomes very difficult to calculate. And obviously, at the moment, we've got the DUP um, completely refusing um, to, to back this deal. And that does mean that there will be... Um, there will be some Tory Brexiteers um, who, who who will not who will not vote for it either because if it if it's not good enough for the DUP, that puts a significant strain on on the union and and this is supposed to be the Conservative and Unionist Party protecting protecting the union. Just a quick one on Boris Johnson. Some of the commentating last night said you know uh, Brussels had said you know that they they wouldn't reopen the withdrawal agreement, the backstop going nowhere. I mean. They did. You know, obviously he gave he his ground too, but they reopened yeah. the agreement. The backstop is gone. What kind of political victory? How does this look politically for the Prime Minister, Jennifer? Well, at the moment, I think you can say it looks it looks pretty good. You know, it, it is obviously contingent on it actually getting support from MPs. But at the moment, um, he, he has managed to do what was looking impossible Um up until just a few days ago, um, there, there, there are there, there are ways in which he has, as I say, you know, because he's lost the support of the DUP here, um, because he has made these major concessions over um, over customs and, and VAT. Um, there's some very complicated fudging going around, even more fudge than Theresa May could, could ever have dreamed of, um, to, to try and get this to try and cobble it together. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it is it is significant that the EU has, as you say, with, uh, re reopened the withdrawal agreement to make to make some of these changes. Um, Many of them stay in place. However, um, there's still this idea, uh, this, this idea that within the within the withdrawal agreement, which is the legally binding text, unlike the political declaration, um, that um, the, the, there will need to be a level playing field between the UK and the EU, um, and that also is going to upset some of the Brexiteers because they want that clean break from Europe to allow them to make new trade deals. Um, so yeah, I mean, but both sides have given way, um, and at, at the moment, um, it looks, it does look like, t to my mind, um, it looks like the, the UK has given slightly more ground here. Um, but yeah, the, the EU has, has done um, what what people said could not be done, um, in that they, they have actually backed down on some major issues. And Jennifer, backstop aside, is this deal really, in what way does it differ from Theresa May's deal? Um, one of the 
big changes is is around um, consent. Um, so th there's this idea that um, we, we're, we're going to have this situation um, it, it, under the deal where we basically have um, a, a customs border in, in the Irish Sea, effectively. Um, and, and that is going to be um, is going to be implemented immediately um, after the December two, 2020 um, transition period next year. And it's going to be four years, and after four years, there's going to be a vote um, in, in Northern Ireland about, about whether um, they want to carry on with with the status quo as, as it would be, or if they want to basically scrap it and start again. Um, and, and that would mean a decision about whether or not to to fully sign up, I guess, to to Great British rules or to um, or to the Republic of Ireland and, and the EU rules. Um, so it is going to be it is going to be very very complicated. Um, that is something that wasn't really um, that wasn't really on the table before because obviously um, okay. Theresa May was trying to avoid um, any kind of um, any kind of separation of Northern Ireland off from Great Britain. But that is what um, Boris Johnson had, that that's that's the deal that he's come to is, is basically um, in, in many ways sort of have, having that border down the Irish Sea that Theresa May tried so hard to avoid. Are you ready for Super Saturday? <laughs> oh yeah, um, it, it's going it's to carry on. Um, forever potentially <laughs> um they, they, they've taken off the, the normal time limits um so yeah i mean you know how much mps love to talk about brexit um it could be hours and hours and hours okay good to talk to you <laughs> thanks very much political journalist jennifer mckiernan speaking there yeah there's a lot going on in this deal a lot that we're going to try and uh, distill throughout the morning try and uh, figure out what it means for you what it means for your business we're going to have um the experts to answer your questions like this uh,